for the repose of the souls of Giovanni and Antoinette Marino, Mary Costello, and Bruno Bacciagrupo. Glory to God in the highest. those you set firm on the foundation of your love. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped. Then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you test the just, to probe mind and heart. Let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. For your sake I bear insult, and shame covers my face. I have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's children, because zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. I pray to you, O Lord, for the time of your favor, O God. In your great kindness, answer me with your constant help. Answer me, O Lord, for bounteous is your kindness. In your great mercy, turn toward me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Seek, you lowly ones, and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor and his own who are in bonds he spurns not. Let the heavens and the earth praise him, the seas and whatever moves in them. Lord, in the name of God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, through one man sin entered the world, and through sin death, and thus death came to all men, inasmuch as all sin. For up to the time of the law, sin was in the world, though sin is not accounted when there is no law. But death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not sin after the pattern of the trespass of Adam, who was the type of the one who was to come. But the gift is not like the transgression, for if by the transgression of the one the many died, how much more did the grace of God and the gracious gift of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow for the many? The word of the Lord. Amen. 
Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whisper, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without your father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who acknowledges me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The month of June ends this week, and we have dedicated, as the church puts forward, as our bishop encouraged us to do, the whole month of June is always dedicated to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, the title of our parish. Our bishop, who does have a personal devotion to the Sacred Heart, urged that in the whole diocese, everywhere, renewed understanding of the why and the what is devotion to the Sacred Heart. So we at Sacred Heart Parish, we've reinstituted, rededicated ourselves to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. What is it? Christ invites us into a relationship with him. He invites us into the same relationship he had with Adam and Eve when he created them. And each evening they walked in the garden together. And he says, come and walk with me on the paths of life. Walk with me and be my children and your names will be carried in my heart the way a parent carries their children always in their hearts. Do this, he says, and I won't just bless you in heaven. The Sacred Heart is about things that God gives us right now, before heaven, in this life, not having to wait until heaven. And our Lord said, if you have devotion to my Sacred Heart, what does devotion mean? If you pray to me, if you're close to me, if you keep me with you all the time. When we say prayer, we learn something. We're praying to the Sacred Heart here in our parish. We've got our booklets of the Sacred Heart prayers. We're saying them every day. We're saying these prayers. Why? Because we think sometimes if we flip off a couple of words, we praise. God help me, I pray. No. That's like, think of it this way. God help me. Hello, Mom, how you doing? Good, I'm busy, bye. Did you communicate? Yeah, you did. Was it good? No, it wasn't good at all. So when I say, God help me, see, I prayed for something. I did and I didn't. We learned from the Sacred Heart that when I pray for something, I'm gonna say my prayer every day. 
I'm sincerely, seriously asking for something, and I'm going to put my time into the asking. We've learned that part of prayer involves a sacrifice, not just words, doing something to show God our hearts and our intention with the prayers. So a couple of Fridays ago, we made our pilgrimage to Rockville Center and prayed the feast day mass of the Sacred Heart with our bishop at St. Agnes. We made a serious statement of our prayer and the Sacred Heart teaches us that. But I want to kind of end the last together thoughts on the Sacred Heart for the month of June with something I touched upon last week, but let me just flesh it out this week. When our Lord appeared to St. Margaret Mary, he told her, if people would only understand and draw near to my sacred heart, if they would put themselves and their needs into my heart, I will bless them, not only later, but now, today, in this life. He made promises, like a parrot. Remember I said last week, a parrot tries to feed vegetables into the little child, and the little child doesn't want vegetables. So the parent pleads with the child, come on, one more spoonful, I'll take you to the park, one more spoonful, we'll get that video game you want, just one more. This is for your own good, kid, but I'm pleading with you to do what's for your own good. The Sacred Heart pleads with us. He bargains with us. He makes us promises to do what's for our own good, to be close to God and walk with God. It's for my good. It gives me peace in this life. So he's saying, do it. Have devotion to my Sacred Heart. Understand who I am and what I offer you, and I'll bless you now. Do what is good for you, and I'll give you blessings besides. He bargains for us. The promises that he makes, they're in the back of the prayer booklets. Some of them seem to overlap, and the reason is because he made the promises several times to St. Margaret Mary, but either he used different words for the same promise, or when she wrote them down, she used different words for the same promise. But some of them are the same promise in different words. First promise, to the person who understands my sacred heart and what I offer, to the person who will bring their needs to me, to the person who will seriously pray to my sacred heart. I will give them every grace they need, whatever their state of life is. So he's not talking about heaven. He's talking about now. Who are you? What do you do? Who do you deal with every day? What are the challenges that you meet? What are the crosses that you have to carry? What are the troubles that weigh you down? Whatever your state in life, I will give you every grace, every strength from heaven to bear those troubles, to meet those challenges, and not to let them become a means of your losing grace, but to let them become a means of your pleasing me and gaining grace. If they weigh heavy on you, my hand will hold you up, whatever they will be. Have devotion to my sacred heart. I will do this for you now in this life. He says, and here, number two and number nine are basically the same promise in different words. He says in these two promises, really one, if you will place my image in a prominent place in your home where everyone can see it and be reminded 
by looking at it. If you will do that, I will bless that home. My sacred heart will bring peace and unity to that house where my heart is exposed, looked at. Yes, that, that makes great sense. How many people you go into their homes and what do they have? They have pictures, maybe pictures of the children, the grandchildren, pictures of a vacation. That was a good moment. That was a happy moment. And you want to look at that picture once in a while of the vacation and the happy moment with the kids when they're all screaming and slamming doors. You want to remember, oh, yeah, there were good moments too. We went on vacation. This was good together. Well, to look at the picture of the Sacred Heart reminds everyone in the house who you are and what you're about. When the 4th of July comes, we're going to put flags all over the place because we're proud to be Americans. To expose the image of the Sacred Heart in a prominent place where everyone in the house can see it all the time is a statement in this house God reigns. And he says where people understand that, there will be a peace and a unity. He says, I will bestow great blessings upon all their undertakings. In other words, every project that we begin, if we call upon the sacred heart, he will bless that project. Do you remember a few weeks ago, we had the first reading of the Tower of Babel, the Old Testament. When the people began to build the tower, God cursed them and he confused their speech so they couldn't finish the project. Do you remember what I said? What was the sin of those people that God punished them in that way? Do you remember? The sin was they never asked God's blessing on what they were doing. It says, they said to themselves, we can do this. Everyone will think we're great when we do it. We don't need God's help. And they just set out doing it. And God heard the sound of the saws and hammers in heaven and came down to check it out. But they never told him about it. They began a great work, and they didn't ask his blessing. But the Sacred Heart is telling us, when you begin something, when you begin a new job, when you begin a new year at school, when you begin a project around the house, when you begin something that you want to do, ask me to bless it. Ask me to help you. Ask me to give you strength and to guide you. I will. Ask my blessing, and I will give it to you. Sinners shall find in my heart the source of an infinite ocean of mercy. What a great image. When you talk about God's mercy, you usually talk in terms of one drop of God's mercy is enough. He says, if you, the sinner turns to me, I will give them an ocean filled with mercy. But what he's saying is this, have devotion to my sacred heart, and I'll always let you know what the sins are. There's a problem today. It's a problem with Catholics. They don't know what sin is. They don't know what sins are, and they certainly don't think they ever sin. They, they've forgotten sin is that which offends God or hurts another person. What offends God? Faith teaches us that. We study the scriptures. He tells us what offends him. But most people go around and they have no sense that anything that they do offends God or hurts other people. So there's no concept of sin or virtue. I suppose to avoid this and do that. Therefore, they're never going to ask for forgiveness because they just don't believe that there is sin in their lives. So if you don't ask for forgiveness, God's not going to give you what you don't know enough to ask for. 
So he says, devotion of my sacred heart. You will know the difference between right and wrong. And even if you've done wrong, you will know that you have to be sorry and ask for forgiveness. And when you do that, I won't give you a drop. I'll give you an ocean of forgiveness, he says. Then the seventh promise, he uses two words we don't use anymore. Tepid souls will grow fervent. Tepid and fervent. Did you use those words this past week? No, they're not part of our everyday speech. However, they have meaning. Tepid. Tepid can mean like flat. No taste, no flavor. Uh, tepid could mean lukewarm, not hot, not cold. Tepid could mean boring. Tepid can mean dull. As we go through life, sometimes the things that we do every day, the things that involve the people we love, the service that we give to the people that we love, the place where we are, who we deal with, sometimes what you do every day can become a little dull. The sparkle wears off. And the problem is once you allow that to happen, then your head kind of is down. You're losing the joy of life. God's giving you a gift of life each day, and you're not finding joy. You're not finding joy in people, in things. It all becomes very flat and very dull and very tasteless. That's tepid. It can happen to us. It happens in our family obligations. It happens at work. It happens at school. Of course, it wouldn't happen here. But it can <laughs> happen to us. Things become dull. The Sacred Heart says, have devotion to me. Tell me about it. I will give you the grace never to allow the joy of life to leak out of your soul. I will constantly renew your joy in who you have in your life and what you do in your life. He says, he makes a promise to priests. In a sense, he's saying, and you guys have to pray too. He said to the priests who have devotion to my sacred heart, I will give the power to touch the hardest of sinners. Then the last promise that he makes, it's kind of a repetition of the fourth one. The last promise is one that takes us not so much for the month of June, but one that carries us through the whole year. And this promise is basically the only one that doesn't involve now. This one involves heaven. He says, if you have devotion to my sacred heart, and remember it, devotion is not, sacred heart, help me, amen. If you really have devotion to my sacred heart, he said, I'm going to ask you to go to Mass and receive communion on nine consecutive First Fridays. If you do that, I will promise that when your soul appears before my Father to be judged, I will be your refuge. This one is a little tricky. Nine consecutive first Fridays. Our parish is sacred heart. We have the devotion to the sacred heart every first Friday. There's a mass in the evening, every first Friday, when we say our prayers to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. The idea is at some point in your life, you make nine consecutive first Fridays. But it's tricky. He said consecutive, which means I made seven, I missed one. 
Too bad. Go back to number one. They've got to be nine consecutive first Fridays. And be careful of the month of April. Because if Good Friday falls on a first Friday, there's no mass on Good Friday. It's the one day of the year when there's no mass. So be careful. When you take out your calendar <clears throat> and you begin to mark what your nine first, when you're going to begin your nine first Fridays, you don't want Good Friday as one of those first Fridays because there won't be a Mass. Is this magic? No. Magic are those prayers people read in the back of church that say, this is a never failing novena to St. Jude. Say this prayer 10 times a day and leave 10 copies in church to annoy Father. <laughs> and when you do this, you will be guaranteed that whatever you're praying for, you will get. So if you're asking to win the lotto and you pray those 10 days, the prayer 10 times a day, St. Jude promises you'll win the lotto. The only problem is St. Jude never said that. If you read his epistle in the New Testament, St. Jude never promised that. This comes from the sacred heart. And he's not promising something magical. He's promising something that's absolutely in accord with everything that Christ said to us. You will have devotion to my sacred heart. You and I will talk together often. You will walk with me often. You will pray to me every day. You will have confidence that I carry you in my heart like a parent carries a child. You will be confident in that and you will draw strength from that relationship in life. And when the time comes for your soul to appear before my Father, as he reads everything you did in your life and sometimes looks at you over the top of his glasses for some of the things that he's reading, when that moment comes, hide behind me. I'll be your refuge. When that moment comes, I'll protect you before my Father because you had devotion to me and you will be sorry for those sins you here read. All this comes from devotion to the sacred heart. Look what he's done for us this past month. Sacred heart has taught us about prayer and serious prayer. The Sacred Heart has taught us about his invitation to come close to him. He's promised us strength and grace, not only in heaven, but right here and now for our lives. He's promised us that at the end of our life, because of our devotion, we will find a protector, a refuge in him and forgiveness for our sins. All of this comes from devotion to the Sacred Heart. We've been very blessed this past month to focus and to understand and to increase our faith in God. Now, if the parish had been named St. Ramalal, we wouldn't have had any of this good stuff. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand for the creed. I believe in one God. Amen.
Blessed be the kingdom of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, now, forever, for ages, unto endless ages. Amen. Amen. The response to each petition will be, Lord, have mercy for peace in our world and end to violence wherever people are being persecuted, driven from their homes, or put to death, especially in the Ukraine, that through the intercession of Mary, Queen of Peace, God's gift of peace might soon be attained. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, that more young men and women will hear God's call to a religious vocation and follow his voice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord for our Pope Francis and our Bishop John, that God may continue to guide them in strength and wisdom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord that civil leaders will use their authority to provide bread for the hungry, life for the unborn, and justice for the oppressed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord for the sick of the parish, especially Benedetta Sonoma, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for deceased family and friends, especially the souls of those enrolled in our parish purgatorial society for this month, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, O oh God, help, save, pity, protect us who call upon you in faith. For we do rely on the intercession of Blessed Virgin Mary, imploring Saint Gennaro all the saints, we commend ourselves, each other, our whole lives, to Christ our God, to thee be glory for ages unto endless ages. Amen. 50-50 <clears throat> raffles are available after all masses this week. Reconciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Yes. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty eternal god through christ our lord for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours he humbled himself and was born of the virgin by the passion of the cross freed us from an ending death by rising from the dead gave us life eternal so with angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, the hosts, 
the powers of heaven. We sing the hymn of your glory. Without end, we acclaim. and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, and remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, all the clergy. Remember brothers and sisters fallen asleep in hope of resurrection, all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all. We pray that with blessed Virgin Mary, mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, blessed apostles, the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you 
through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, all honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and power of the Lord Jesus, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit.
and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you as spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Our session number 612. Thank you.